Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you the installation of CentOS on your desktop machine. Not even CentOS, but it's normally Linux. The installation steps are simple. Over the time, the installation has been changed a lot. Okay, so this what I'm showing you is regarding the old kernel. The old kernel had several packages, additional packages that you would get if you're installing the old kernel. But after 2012-2013, the software packages have been diminished. Only a few packages have been kept. So what we will see right now is the installation and I'll show you and explain to you installation of each and every step. What does everything mean and uh, what you can do and what you do not have to do. What is necessary and what is not necessary so that the installation becomes easier. It is very simple. The installation will complete in about, you know, not even 10 to, it does not take more than 10 minutes. Only the selection process will take some time because you have to think over each and every step so that the installation goes smoothly and you don't have any problem. What I'm doing right now is I'm setting the virtual machine. Since I'm doing it on a virtual machine, the installation will be pretty much similar only thing I have to do is show you how to do it so I'm going to start right now by selecting the option I'll install the operating system later this will allow me to you know show you everything step by step and it will be much easier to install and uh, this is it okay I'm moving ahead the name of the virtual machine given the size of the disk. The size of the disk should be such that it should also not fully occupy your hard disks, your system hard disk. Okay. Why don't I do N D? Just a minute. GB. 50 GB will be enough because this is the old kernel so installation size of the kernel and the OS will be not even 9 or 10 GB so I just need this for experimentation purposes so this will be enough I found to customize my hardware I need to ramp up the RAM a bit I'll keep it actually kernel 2.6 only needs 1024 and it's enough because Linux has a very good a very good feature of not using RAMs and the process keeps on running even in a low RAM but the current the previous kernel had this very advantageous feature of not using more than 512 MB RAM but since current changes have been happening, many much changes have been happened between the previous years. So the amount of RAM they have increased, the whole Linux OS foundation has increased the RAM, minimum required RAM of their OSs to 1024. Why? Because the GUI has been changed. The GNOME has been changed. That is a desktop user interface, which I will show you in a few while. So everything has been changed. So they have ramped up the minimum amount of RAM needed for running the OS and mm, not much trouble for any of us but okay I'll edit the virtual machine the CD use an ISO file well not here okay this is the ISO file that I needed so I've selected the ISO image file now the installation will start once I boot the virtual machine. Well, if you, uh, you guys who are installing this, you will need to use either a bootable pen drive or a CD. Well, uh, in these, uh, in the age of digital multimedia, CD, the need for a compact disc or a DVD is fastly and widely diminishing. So, a bootable PD will be more than enough because there is a very diminishing demand. The demand for CD drives and DVD drives has been vastly diminishing. 
plus there are ultra fast DVDs and CD players coming up where it can be attached via USB and or otherwise if you have a laptop your uh, CD drive might be optical disk drive and it is very much fast so nonetheless you can use either a CD or a DVD but you'll have to write the ISO file into the CD or a DVD a CentOS 6.8 CentOS 6.8 will have two DVDs which you'll have to use one by one and uh, if you take CentOS 7, it will have only one. Why? Because the installation size and the size of the ISO file has been quietly, I mean, it has been reduced considerably. So, what I'm going to show you right now is the old kernel. Now, I'll play the virtual machine. So, the virtual machine has started. Let's see. Okay, so there's this option. Okay. There is option to install or upgrade an existing system. Install system with basic video driver, rescue install system, boot from local drive. So what are we going to choose is install or upgrade an existing system. Well, the existing system does not have an OS installed. So, you know, based on these options, I can see the first option to be very much favorable for a fresh install. I'll be selecting that. The ISO is getting ready. The very, a uh, very much, what I can say is, advantage of using Linux also is, you can see what is happening behind. What all processes are uh, starting up. This is a media check step. If you say OK, it will check your installation media first. If you are using an ISO or a CD, it will go on first checking the media. The testing is going to take a bit of a time. If you have that much time, you can use it. Use this option and uh, you know you can check your media. What this does is this check for errors in your media. If there are any, it will check, it will ask you to make another media or check the media that you've inserted is correct or not. Mostly if the ISO is not proper, this might happen. Otherwise, this mostly it's a rare case where error occurs. Otherwise, this will go you know successful most of the times. I don't need it. So I'll just skip. It says found local installation media. This installation is based on the old Anaconda installer. Now, what is Anaconda installer? Anaconda installer is the installation is actually the installer built for Linux itself. It is the like it can be a GUI or the previous Anaconda installer. The older ones were command line based. Those are actually a bit tedious. Now it's become very easier. And uh, this is the kernel 2.6. It was easier then as well and much easier now. Since the kernel got upgraded, so the Anaconda installer has been changed and much of the steps have been diminished or, you know, the steps have been skipped or, you know, one step has too many options to be done. So the current installation is very easy. This is just the installation that I'm showing you so that you get an idea of, you know, how to do it. You can uh, select the language. There are many languages in Linux. Linux supports a wide variety of language. It supports many languages from India, from UK, US English, to Spanish, to Finnish, to German, to Greece, any language. Russian, Hungarian, any language you want. It supports every other language. The most beautiful part of Linux is it does not use ASCII. It uses Unicode. It can even read languages. It can even display languages. It uses Unicode. Unicode is the new format of showing text or reading or writing text. It has actually been used by Linux for ages. The Windows accepted Unicode in the transitional phase of XP and 7. Before that, Unicode was not a standard in Windows. So, pretty much, yeah, Windows had a bit of a trouble while, you know, reading languages other than English because they had to, you know, release an OS for every other language. A different language means OS for English, OS for Estonian, OS for Finnish, OS for Russian, OS for this. So, they had to release 
many versions for different languages but Linux that is not the case one OS many languages that is the most beautiful feature of Linux which uses Unicode standards to you know use many other different languages at once now it also supports many keyboards international ASCII key I mean ASDF keyboard or Dora keyboard other language keyboard and in many other keyboards QWERTY I'm sorry not ASDF I'm sorry I should have said it's QWERTY QWERTY keyboards I'm going to select English okay this step which type of device will your installation involve uh, it's for if an installation or if a user wants to you know use or a specific kind of a device or you know for storage area networks or shared storage or any other that then you can use specialized storage devices specialized storage devices will involve you know using this with RAID and with multiple devices so this is for advanced user those who know what these storages signify what I'm going to use is basic storage if there are any data there's a notification showing that there's a warning if there is no partition that can be detected since it's an empty disk okay for the first time so what I'm going to do is discard any data if there is present only the VMware disk will be affected don't worry if you're having an existing windows okay be careful you should be able to select okay if you are using windows already uh, it will not delete any of your data otherwise you can say keep any data you can use this option because my disk is empty I am using discard any data so the host name of the PC you can use it anything okay here there are specific time zones given since I am from here I can use Kolkata okay you'll have to specify a root password the root password standards in Linux is very strong you cannot use a dictionary password dictionary password dictionary words I'm sorry dictionary words a password is considered as weak because it is very easy for one to know a dictionary password a, dic a password which has a dictionary word I'm sorry again so using a very common word is not allowed in Linux on well it will it will be on the it will be you know uh, based on the user's point of view if you want to keep the password as such simple passwords should not be kept as a root password root password should be very strong it should be a combination of special characters small capital characters numbers and if this combination has been maintained the password will be strong but the user will have to remember the password every time so my suggestion making a strong password please first write it down then type it keep it with you because chances are that password can be forgotten and once the root password is forgotten you won't have access to your root file system and if you are a pseudo user or your admin you'll have to change it but first you'll have to access it then only you can change it if you cannot access it then it's well gone you can say otherwise you'll have to recover the password or you know change the password using a live CD or something like that well that's a bit tedious task just make sure to you know save your password and write it down somewhere so that you can remember it in the future I am I'll be using a bit simple combination not that great you have write a weak password it is based on a dictionary word this is the error that it gives I say use anyway okay what which type of installation now this is the uh, this is a step which was provided in the previous distros in the older distros kernel 2.6 distros which type of installation would you like use all space means it will use the 
the entire space in the hard drive to install Linux. Replace existing Linux systems. What this will do, it will check for an existing Linux system and uh, install a new system over that existing system, creating drives well in its default settings according to its default settings shrink the current system that is not advisable to new users do not use that until and unless you know what it does use free space what will this do option it will calculate the free space on your hard disk if there are two OS already and still there is space remaining unallocated space use free space option means that if you have installed windows and if any drive is empty that does not count as an empty space or that does not count as a free space that space will be belonging to that drive itself if you are having a 500 GB hard disk and 200 GB has been allotted to Windows and 100 GB has been allotted to Linux it will check not 100 150 GB is allotted to Linux so that makes up to 350 GB it will check for 150 GB free space and will assign it will use that space only so if there are no free space in your uh, hard disk, it will throw an error or give a message that there is no free space existing. Now, what I'm going to do is create a custom layout. What is this? What does this option do? We'll check on in the further step. This is my disk which I've assigned to Linux. Your disk here would be your internal hard disk. The total size here. You will also see, it will also show you the existing Windows drives along with the free disk space that can be assigned to Linux. You don't have to touch the Windows drive. Just remember before installing, check the size of the hard drive, the name of the hard drive. Well, it will be CD, ENF in Windows, but in Linux, it would be named in a different way.